joined uh, by Dr. Herod Velasquez, the uh, Chief of Cardiology at Yale University. Um, Eric, you have just uh, given a fantastic presentation. Uh, first, let me say thank you for accepting my invitation to come to this really, conference. It's really my pleasure, and it's uh, remarkable to see the uh, group uh, assembled and uh, what is already happening that's so good uh, um, here in Jamaica under the leadership of, of, of you and among others. Uh, and, and I think um, it's also important to highlight the uh, that you know what has come through in this in the talks and our social engagement as well is is you're never you've never accepted that you're good enough. You're always getting better. Right? Yes. You're always trying to bring bring uh, uh, expertise and bring uh, 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 novel strategies, and, and we're always learning. That's why we're physicians, right? So that is, I think, fundamentally just a, such an important thing to highlight that that this conference represents. Um, the, the need to continue to, to re-educate ourselves on an ongoing basis. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, uh, medicine is changing rapidly. Um, a lot of knowledge is being gained. And cardiology, particularly, has been explosive in its growth. I remember in the very early days there, the older textbooks of medicine and cardiology I was saying beta blocker therapies, I'm trying to get in. Yeah, it. I remember it very well. I can remember that. I remember right. being yelled at. <laughs> yes. By some of, some of world class leaders yes, and my partners yes. and, and my mentors because <laughs> I made the mistake of, of taking a patient on the CCU and who had heart failure and giving them a beta blocker. Yeah, that's not too far yeah, away. I, it, in my lifetime. Exactly. <laughs> and now is a mainstay of therapy, right? You know, for heart failure. And so the research the investigation of uh, treatment options continue to expand our horizon and heart failure has been a major driver of mortality in our patients with heart disease and you have been an acclaimed leader in the study of Thank heart you. failure uh, internationally you know your work with stage paradigm hf and pioneer has been quite remarkable and impressive the a recent publication, you just had a paper out in England Journal of Medicine. And I think it's, when is it, this week? Well, it's just the, the, the press. Uh, it may be, uh, actually, if it's printed, I actually don't know, but it was, it, was, it, was, it, was simultaneous, it was simultaneously published online yes. with the American Heart Association publication. Exactly. So it was impressive to see. So we now have Sacubitril Valsatin, which they are adding arm of treatment, which is a new addition to treatment, we look at uh, stable heart failure patients with paradigm, and now we're looking at acute decompensated, stable enough to initiate treatment. Yeah. And you're showing 46% reduction in composite endpoint. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so this is, you know, it, uh, I have, my, um, my career definitely has progressed increasingly more. Not to say that I'm not excited about the, the, the new bells and whistles, right? But more about how we implement um, data day to day and how we evaluate strategies. So here's a great example, right? We we have uh, we had a new drug, Zuvalsartan, that uh, you know um, was really quite impressive. It's a novel mechanism. It's a it's a fixed combination of, of drugs that we haven't historically had available to use together. We've had Valsartan, Vasugural, the Neprolysin inhibitor mm -hmm. uh, is, a new, is a new agent, a new class of agents. And, you know, therapeutically, uh, ha, you know, in, made a difference in, in chronic ambulatory heart failure. But we, we really had, uh, while that study was so impressive, it is the largest, think about it, the largest heart failure mm -hmm. trial ever done in right. chronic heart failure. Um, it, a, it actually excluded a lot of patients uh, uh, that um, we see day in day out, and those uh, were the patients that I said, you know what? In 2014, uh, when I started designing this, really a little, a little earlier, but when I saw the results of Paranine, that's when myself and my partners, particularly uh, my partner uh, Gene Bromwell, 
we kind of put our heads together and said, you know, there's a, there's a window here. You know, we know what the future is going to look like. Everyone's excited about this now. But when it goes into practice, it, you know, physicians will not necessarily use it because they won't have confidence in whether it be safe and effective at the point of care in hospital where patients are really quite safe. dynamically unstable. Um, and, um, and that was really the basis for Pioneer was really to, to look at a new strategy in a different way to see if we can to really understand whether it would be safe and effective. And, and the, short, the short story is, you know, not everything works out well. <laughs> this one well did, uh, and we were able to, uh, to, eva to uh, pull together a large enough trial. Remember, the ethics here were, were people were uh, on the fence. They said, oh, we have, this, we have paradigm. Everyone's going to be using it. We, we won't be able to do this trial. And then what we realize now is that no one, you know, not, not very many people sure, have sure. it up. And certainly everyone had a lot of discomfort in the hospitalized patients because there was no data. Uh, and those patients had been excluded from parents. So Pioneer fit a beautiful niche. Mm -hmm. It really, I think, um, builds on what was the, uh, on, the, uh, on the evidence that was developed for Paradigm. But now we know we can take patients uh, early, Again, stabilized, not hypotensive, but in the hospital, regardless of they're black or white or new heart failure diagnosis mm -hmm. or old heart failure diagnosis, um, and uh, whether they've been on prior ACE or ARB or not, you know, really much more of an all-comer right, population. Right. And uh, and if we make a decision in the hospital to start cerebral bell sergeant versus the standard, which would have been an ACE inhibitor, uh, what we know now from Pioneer is that in eight weeks we're going to reduce rehospitalization by heart failure and mortality by approximately 50% in eight weeks. That's now, uh, phenomenal. That, you know, I, I would, it's not a perfect trial. We didn't do, we didn't design it to test that outcome as a primary. Mm -hmm. To be very frank, we, we premised our study on nt probing p We know that when we can reduce nt probing p extensively, that tracks very well with prognosis. And we saw, we certainly showed that as well. But I think what we were able to do is organize a large enough trial to fill the niche, and we felt that we couldn't really do a trial that was a long-term trial because once you got past two or three months, <laughs> yes. then you were a paradigm patient, right? right? So, right. so we I think really you know matched the 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 trial to the clinical need, and you know that's where I think in my uh, career and expectation that's where it's the most fun, where you really you know you can envision. Uh, this patient that you're enrolling, not as a hypothetical, but as a as something that you and I, in sure, clinical sure. practice, take care of all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, two things I found particularly exciting about the Pioneer HF, which you led, is uh, uh, one, you know, the effort to make it very inclusive. You know, you had, what, about 35% of the patients were African American. That's correct. 30, right? Over thirty-five percent. So that's a significant number yeah. that tells us that this is applicable. I mean, the, the, the highlight that pers that the the thirty-five percent um, in terms of the total absolute number of patients who were African American enrolled in Pioneer is more more than that than the patients that were enrolled in Paradigm. Paradigm, yes, that's uh, you know, and that's a very beautiful you know part of the study. The other one is the ability to initiate this treatment in hospital because uh, from experience is when patients have treatment initiated while admitted and they're sent home on that treatment, it is more likely that that will be the ongoing treatment. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's probably why we don't have as much use of sacubitril valsatin in paradigm agent, despite the right. very- I think this sound combination areas. will, so I, think two people, of them. I think the two of them together uh, really uh, make a case that is, uh, these two results together make a case, I think that should really change practice. Now the guidelines might change for acute heart failure, I mean I suspect they will, but but certainly the guidelines already had been changed mm -hmm. for chronic heart failure. Right. Uh, and you, you didn't see a big uptick. Uh, so I think this combination really fits in the, you know, uh, when we see a patient who presents with an acute myocardial infarction, they've undergone uh, primary angioplasty, uh, you know, let's say one of your patients here in mm -hmm. the Heart Institute, um, and they came in as a smoker. We know that this is the time, that hospitalization, with their family yes. around, is a time to really say, listen, 
you have to you have an opportunity here to change the trajectory yeah, exactly. of your physique. and we know that if we can have that conversation and, uh, and interact with patients and families around that risk factor during that uh, event our likelihood that that patient will stop smoking long term mm -hmm. is higher well here's another indication if we have an opportunity in a heart failure event to make a difference we that's going to have a, a higher likelihood of being that's, that's adhered the best to. It's our best opportunity. Yeah. So that's also one of the nice things. And about. for us, you know, cardiomyopathy, uh, leave that alone, but congestive heart failure, heart failure as a group, yeah. is a major problem in the Caribbean. Of course. Right? We see you had some chat with Dr. Felix Nadora, you know, who works with us. <laughs> he has a lot of interest in heart failure. And uh, within the limitations of our environment, he's been collecting data and accumulating some evidence and publishing some, you know, papers. I know heart failure, uh, so that we are particularly interested in the work you're doing. Thank you. And um, you know, we've talked about collaborations. You know, with uh, um, your group at Yale, with the Heart Institute of the Caribbean. I think there are a lot of lessons we can learn from what you're doing and I believe that your team can also learn some things from what is I, 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 I don't think that's a question I think I'm sure we can learn from each other I think the other issue you know one of my hats in my uh, career path has always been to uh, I mean I, I like to think of um, some people uh, are scientists and work with beakers and reagents and my uh, beakers and reagents are clinical trials and the methodology of clinical trials that's my um, that, that's my uh, mode of investigation, and uh, and you know what we found is the more comprehensive we can and be inclusive, you know, uh, arguably I need to bring clinical trials right. that we're doing globally to Jamaica in partnership right. with you and your team and Felix and others, uh, particularly in heart failure, because you have the patients, yes. they need the information, and what hopefully we can do in clinical trials is develop generalizable data. For patients everywhere and, and obviously if we're not doing it everywhere mm -hmm. that's a problem so i look forward to this partnership absolutely because uh, you know when we look at data we learn a lot of things you know when ola uh, made a great presentation and uh, one of the things that, that have fascinated me i read that paper when it came out i think it was a british group that uh, suggested that amyloid you know could be up to 11 percent prevalence in their Afro-Caribbean population. Uh, we've always wondered about the questionable, unexplained cardiomyopathies in this region. It's subtly the kind of things, you know, we can look at, you know, with, with uh, a PYP uh, scanning, yeah, yeah. you know, in these uh, individuals. And I know you guys have a very robust we, uh, program on that. With uh, Ed Miller and, um, you know, Ed Miller and, and Dan Jacoby uh, were my colleagues at, at Yale a world class not only in the imaging component but in, in developing strategies for inherited cardiomyopathies and I actually think uh, I, I, and I'm actually you know we're working together because I actually believe that getting the strategy the implementation around how we find patients test for them and get them through process as quickly as possible um, will make a huge difference, particularly in African-American sure. uh, and African-Caribbean uh, patients who I think do have, at least based on some of the work that Dan, uh, that Tom mm -hmm. showed and others showed, um, you know, really do have evidence that there is an increased prevalence um, and penetrance of the disease modifying uh, genomic signature for ATTR. Sure. I think, to me, I, I, I see this as one of these key um, uh, successes for the future of, of heart failure care. If we can find those patients that we didn't look for, and we just kind of, we blame that on high, on, you know, most of the time they're hypertensive and they have ATTR. Exactly. And when and we say, oh, some assumption, you know, that's the reason. And we they have a look. the assumption that is made, yeah. but it's not always yeah, right. the case. So I think this is a big uh, opportunity for us, and this is actually a, play, uh, a situation where we need to lead in collaboration. And that's why the partnership is, um, you know, uh, something that mm -hmm. I believe has a lot of uh, um, uh, potential and uh, can be very fruitful, uh, not to us alone uh, as practitioners, but to the patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, leveraging from the experience 
that you uh, have at Yale, you know, with all the fantastic work you guys have done. Uh, we have the patient population here, and then we have great talent. I think the partnership will be very rewarding for the entities. Thank you, uh, Eric, for coming. Again, thanks for accepting the invitation. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Good.